With our rapidly increasing usage and reliance on software comes an urgent need to understand the environmental impacts. Now, there's lots of ways to go about this, and many cloud providers and software systems implement their own approaches to doing so. The impact framework from the Green Software Foundation is an attempt to create a universal interface for the process of measuring software systems' environmental impacts in order to identify key areas of its system improvement, explore what if scenarios for adjusting performance through an approach that's auditable, replicable, and transparent. The impact framework documentation has some great resources for helping you understand the methodology of the framework and details on its various components. This video is for those of you who just want a quick rundown on what installing and configuring the impact framework looks like, as well as how to generate a report from your software observation. This video is also accompanied by a simplified GitHub repo with all the code you'll need. So with that, let's get started. Now I'm going to be programming using Visual Studio Code. You can use any code editor you like. You will need Node and NPM installed. Once you've done that, you'll need to install the impact framework node package. So I'm going to do that in the terminal here. It will install. Now, in order to do anything with the impact framework, also need to install some available plugins. The impact framework has both official and unofficial plugins at the moment. And the goal is to have a plugin registry similar to NPM where you can find all kinds of different plugins that have been built by the community to measure different things. So for now, let's install what they have, which are the IF plugins and the unofficial plugins. Now, if we want to look at what those plugins are, you can go to the GitHub repo for the IF plugins, and this is the list here, as well as the unofficial plugins, which covers these plugins here. We're not going to get into what each of these plugins does at the moment, but we will cover what our specific pipeline plugins do. So you can see now in our folder, we've got this package JSON with the plugins that we installed and their versions, and then the actual dependencies of those plugins, which are all of these things here. Now you can organize your project however you want, but I'm going to make a folder for my manifest input files and my manifest output files. And within the input folder, I'm just going to make a file called manifest YAML. So this is where I'm going to specify all of the plugins I'm going to use, the configuration of my project, the order I want things to run, etc. Now to get you started with a manifest, we're just going to copy the sample manifest file from the GitHub repo in the description. We're going to paste it in here and let's walk through it. There's some simple metadata here, which is project name and description of what this manifest pipeline is supposed to measure, an initialization block, our pipeline, and our configuration for the manifest. Now, what do all these plugins do? Well, to understand that, let's take a look at our pipeline. We've got a plugin for mock observations. So in lieu of actual observations from our system, we're going to use this plugin to generate some fake data. So this is going to take data from a given geographic region with a simulated CPU and memory utilization. And then it's going to group by cloud and region in our case. And I'll show you where that's configured. And then it's going to standardize the timing of the observations. And then it's going to take a look at our cloud usage and make some assumptions about the physical processor that's running it and the thermal design power based on the instance name. So for example, if our cloud vendor was AWS and our instance type was M5 large, then the watt time API is going to determine the carbon intensity of the grid that our system is running on. So for example, California as the region. Then we're going to use this plugin called the TEDS curve. And the TEDS curve estimates CPU usages across varying types of CPUs, taking into account the CPU, the TDP, which is again the thermal design power, the utilization of that CPU, and the duration of the observation. And then the last thing we're going to do in our pipeline is calculate the operational carbon. That's going to combine our energy in kilowatt hours and the grid carbon intensity and give us an overall CO2 equivalent value. So if we look at the initialization node of this YAML file, we'll see that our output is going to be YAML. Uh, you can also do CSV, but we won't cover that just yet. And then we've got some configuration for the plugins themselves. You can see for the operational carbon, our input parameters that we're gonna be requiring are CPU energy usage and grid carbon intensity, and that's going to output carbon. For our mock observations, we're just putting in some sample time steps. We're observing for a duration of 10 seconds. We're specifying some servers and the regions they're in. Our vendor is going to be Microsoft Azure in this case. 
And then we're going to generate a random CPU utilization over time between these values. So that's how these plugins are initialized and instantiated into our pipeline. Now the watt time plugin requires us to register. And so in order to do that, I'm going to create a secrets file called .env with my watt time credentials. And these can be whatever you want, my username, my password, my email, my org. Our repo has some code for how to run this registration in Python. I'm going to make a folder called utilities and then over in our GitHub repo here, let's take a look at that script. And again, we'll just copy it, call it what register. So all this does is it takes the registration API endpoint from what time it passes the values from our env file, username, password, email, and org, and it sends it off to the URL and we'll get a response and print that out to the console. So we know what happened. So let's run that, see what we get. Python 3, utilities, watt registered up EY. And you can see user created. Okay, the next thing we want to do is log in with the watt time API using our credentials. So let's test that out. And again, I'm going to grab the code from that GitHub repo. Here's watt login. Copy that file. Let's make a new script. Oh, watt login. We'll paste in those contents and look at the file. Same basic structure. We're passing in our watt time username, our watt time password, and the endpoint for the login. And we're going to print out the response we get back from their server. So let's run that script. Python 3, utilities, watt login. And we get this token back. So what do we do with that token? That token needs to be passed in the header of any request to the watt time API. And looking here at the API data plans that are available for watt time. So this is going to give us the CO2 percentile for any region we choose and data access through the watt time API. And if we look at the watt time API, we can get region map geometry. We can determine a grid region based on latitude and longitude. We can get forecasting data, which would be helpful in determining where we want to draw our energy from or when we want to be running data intensive operations as well as historical data. And so for any of these endpoints, we see the endpoint URL that we need to request from as well as a code sample in Python of how we would make that request. So we're specifying our region, a start and end time, the signal type, which indicates what sort of response we want back. MOER is code for the marginal operating emissions rate, which is the emissions on the electricity generators that are responding to changes in load on the local grid at a certain time. And then we receive that response. Then they give you an example of what the response would look like. Here's the data. Here's the CO2 value. So again, to figure out where we're at in our pipeline by the time we hit this watt time API, we will have already gathered some observations about the system gathered information about our cloud usage, and now with the watt time API have determined the carbon intensity of the grid based on the region that our cloud instance is running on. The next things in the pipeline are the TEDS curve, which estimates CPU usage and the output of operational carbon. So now let's just check in on the configuration of those two remaining plugins and see what it's expecting. We've got our TEDS curve, and the only thing in the config there is just this interpolation method. We could research the plugin more by looking at its source code. And then operational carbon has this configuration. And our input parameters are CPU and energy and grid carbon intensity. And our output parameter is carbon. So we know what needs to go into this plugin and what needs to come out. I think this is a really helpful way to organize these plugins. Unfortunately, not all of them give you that sort of clarity about what's going in and what's coming out. I think we're ready to run this manifest file. So making sure that we're in the root of our project here, where this package JSON file and our env file set, we're going to run the command. Uh, you can verify your directory by typing pwd or present working directory. And I am indeed in the tutorial root directory. So I know I'm in the right spot to run this command. And the command for the impact framework is IE, and that stands for impact engine. And it wants this parameter, which is the manifest, and that is located in the manifest input directory. And the file name we gave it was manifest in .yaml. Now the next parameter is the output directory, and that is manifest output. And the file name we're going to give it is manifest out. 
Now, if you don't specify an output directory, it will just output to the console. But if we specify this output directory, it's going to give us a file. And that's definitely what we want. And the other thing is that our manifest out doesn't have a file extension. And that's because our outputs can be either YAML or CSV or both. And that's why you won't see a file extension here. If I run this command, I get an error. Okay, let's see what our error is. Uh, it's telling us no such file or directory manifest in.yaml. So let's just check this out. We called it just manifest. Let's actually just rename it because I like the name manifest in to make it clear. Probably it should be named something according to what we want the manifest to actually measure. And try to run this again. Looks like we got a manifest output file. There are some warnings in here, but those seem to be related to our plugins, not to the code that we wrote. So we're going to ignore those. And here is our output file. Now you'll notice at first glance, it looks a lot like our manifest in file. In fact, I can actually pull these up side by side. So manifest in being on the right and our manifest out being on the left here. Very similar, but we'll close this. If we scroll down through the file, we'll see now that it has assembled all of our data. So remember we had specified that we were in this West US three geographic region. It's given some sample timestamps of observations, the duration of the observation, the name of our server, who our cloud vendor is. It's specified a CPU utilization, which remember we were mocking up this data and it was going to range anywhere from one to 99% utilization. And if we scroll down into the outputs here, we'll see a lot more data. We've got the processor that this instance typically use. And with that information, we can actually get thermal design power. So that was our TDB plugin. Our cloud region in this case is California North, gives us the geolocation of that server, gives us the grid carbon intensity at the time that these measurements took place. So again, this grid carbon intensity comes from the watt time plugin, and we are specifying that grid carbon intensity using the marginal operations emissions rate and the units for that are pounds per megawatt hour. So it gives us the actual CPU energy usage and that CPU energy usage is coming from this TEEDS curve. If we look at the documentation for that plugin on the GitHub repo for the unofficial plugins, it tells us that that CPU energy is the energy used by the CPU in kilowatt hours. One thing I want to acknowledge is that given the current state of the framework, if you're not super familiar with this stuff, the outputs in this manifest file are not always clear in terms of what numbers they're representing, in what units, and from which plugins they were generated. What would be great is to see something like grid carbon intensity is pounds per megawatt hour from watt time, CPU energy is kilowatt hours from the TEETS curve, and your carbon value is grams of CO2 equivalent from the operational carbon module. That is the output of this observation. That's what we're looking for is how to convert all this stuff in the pipeline into carbon. And that's what this output file is giving us. Last thing I'll say is that this is not adding up all of the carbon across all of the measurements in any sort of way. This is taking each instance and representing the measurements at that given point in time. So if you wanted that, you'd have to do that manually. Uh, you can see places in this file where the carbon is actually at zero. And my guess is that the grid carbon intensity which is multiplied by our CPU energy to make the carbon calculation is at zero. The reason that might be at zero is that there was either no one using this region to view this site to make this observation, or that the grid was running on clean energy, perhaps. I, I'm not sure. These sorts of observations are what are going to be helpful to you in optimizing your system. So that's it for this video. Hope that it's helpful in getting you started measuring the impacts of the websites you build or manage. If we can't measure, we can't improve, and the planet needs you. Feel free to comment or contribute to the impact framework with your plugins, pull requests, issues, and ideas. Thanks.